Okay, I want to talk a little bit about a RISE 30-day challenge. Who's heard of this RISE 30-day challenge? Who's done it? Awesome. So this is a program uh, that um, uh, Chris Stefanik has created, and it's a 30-day thing. Me and Bob are going through it right now. It's a wonderful program. We're going to show a video of one of, of one of the days of that program. If you want to do it, I highly recommend it. it, it Every time I, every video, it, there's just a short video each day, and then you have some reflection, it's no big deal. But it, I learn something every time I see it. So we're going to play this video because it, it, this really appeals to the fatherhood in us. So let's go ahead and play. Growing up, my image of fatherhood, of course, came through my dad. And in a, in a step off from his dad, and that image for me of, of a father, of, of, um, of my dad, was a harsh one. He was a strong figure. He was a bit distant and a little bit stoic. So for me, I just was longing for something a little bit more close. But it was something that he, based on his experience, couldn't give me. My mother had uh, her issues. My father had his issues. But when the marriage kind of fell apart, it was just a couple years into the divorce that my father suffered two major strokes and was completely debilitated. You know, as a teenager, I'm seeing this, this guy who is Hercules, this guy who is so physically fit. And here he is, uh, weeping, broken, and I'm carrying him down the hallway with my brother. I did see this, this transformation of my father going from this kind of titan of strength uh, and just endurance physically, being a marathoner, uh, to being a broken man. It brought him to his knees literally and spiritually and built a depth of prayer in him, a depth of faith and of confidence that God's got to carry him through this. God has to provide. I, I really did see a new strength start to come out. This suffering just made this crack, I think, in his heart that kind of let, let that in uh, and let that kind of hard vision of fatherhood out. And I, you know, we really became the recipients of that. Rebecca and I were married and we had expectations of really living out what marriage is all about. So not just the two of us sharing our love, but sharing life. But within that first year, we discovered we have a, a cross that really was custom made. I mean, it was, it was infertility. And it was dark. Every month, you know, Rebecca, uh, her, her time would come, the blood would flow, and there'd be no life. And it came to be, it was a male factor, infertility. So for me, as a man, not being able to give Rebecca what she's dreamed of for, you know, since the fourth grade, it was, it was such a stab to the heart. I remember hearing a quote from the Talmud once, which goes, uh, it's only when we are crushed that we yield what is best in us. And Rebecca and I were crushed in the first few years of our marriage. But what happened is it created a longing at the same time. It created a thirst for life and that we would never take life for granted. I saw in my own father when he was crushed, I started to see, okay, this is how it works. If we allow ourselves to bear this cross, God's in it. God's not distant. He's not dropping this cross down onto the earth, but he's actually on it with us. And if we bear it, we can find something beautiful at the other side. Adoption came to us um, in a lot of ways, as a great, as a great surprise. And we never would have guessed that we would be uh, this big adoptive family with four children. A couple of years into receiving the great gift of our of our children, I remember having a chat with Rebecca, and she said, "I I don't regret our cross of infertility. I I, I embrace it now because without this cross." infertility, we wouldn't have these adoptive miracles. There wouldn't be a Seth, there wouldn't be a Claire, they wouldn't be in our hearts and in our home. It's, it's a roller coaster ride. 
Uh, and we joke, like, sometimes we pray for dull moments, you know, Lord, give us a dull moment today. <laughs> but it's a, it's a whirlwind, and we get to live, um, really, this call to love. We get to live fatherhood and motherhood every day, and it's shaping us in whole new ways. And I do feel sometimes deeply, a lot of times, my own inadequacy. You know, who am I? How can I do this? And uh, the answer is I can't. I can't do it without the Father, without the Heavenly Father. If, if I'm not turning my face to Him, I can't, I can't do it. There's moments when I'm being dad and I'm trying to discipline the kids maybe and it's just all the heck's breaking loose. I mean, I'm constantly learning, growing, being stretched. But um, I think I, I'm taking with me what I've experienced and what I've learned from my father. And I'm, I'm trying to, uh, to breathe that into my home. Uh, I'm trying to, to be that firm structure that I think our kids need and I think a father provides, you know, through uh, his strength. But I know that at the same time, it can't just be those bones. It can't just be that cold structure that, say, my grandfather gave to my father because he was aching for the heart. Just listen, just be present. Be their father, be the steward of these little hearts. That's my vocation. Fatherhood is for every man, single, celibate, uh, married. It's the full flowering of a man. That uh, when a man has matured and grown and when he walks into a room, he's attentive. A man is called to be a steward, a custodian, and a guardian of life and of the family. And that's what the world's hungry for. It's in us. It's in us. And the more we open up to the Father, the more we understand who we are. And we have the power to, to live it. Dad, he's coming close on to 70 now. We see him uh, not as often as we'd like. And, uh, you know, after a couple of pints and it's time for bed, we, um, we say goodnight and it's just awesome. He'll give me a big hug and he'll say, I love you, kiddo. And I, it's four words, but those are four words he never got his whole life. And um, he almost trembles when he says it. And for me, uh, I get it. And I know that I will never not say that to my kids. A man has got to say it. A man's got to say I love. He's got to lead with that love. We've got to be the dynamic love. And is strong, is a stable force, but is also tender and invites people to receive everything as gift. I mean, that's the Father. And I've got to do my best to be that face of the Father. There's so much power to a man who can not be afraid of being powerless before God, who can, who can get on his knees. And that's how the battle's won. So I want to say thanks, Dad. And I just want to raise a glass to you. I love you.